Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome. Hello. So myself, Anupam, and my colleague, Gaurav, today we are going to present to you Evolving Phosology Ecosystem. So to, in today's agenda, we'll see what is this Phosology project and how it's getting benefited from programs like GSOC. So what is this Phosology project is all about? So let's take a brief look into this project. Phosology is an open source license compliance software system toolkit. As a tool toolkit, you can use uh, Phosology for license, copyright, and ECC scan from command line. And as a system, you have a database and UI where you can perform your compliance activities. Phosology is pub published almost a decade ago in 2008 and licensed under GPL 2.0. In 2015, it becomes a Linux Foundation collaborative collaboration project. It's a multi-user, multi-tenant. It provides you a multi-user, multi-tenant web UI for review and organizing your clearing jobs. So that's more about Phosology project. And in Phosology development stack, is um, it's used uh, C, C++, PHP, and in the back end, you have Postgres SQL. That's all legacy code base or legacy software that we use for Phosology. Uh, so what we what's what's Phosology does? So Phosology has um, uh, multiple agents. So if you have any archive for a software, you can upload it to Phosology and it runs its agents through your archive to find out different interesting things. So when you upload your archive to Phosology, it first unpack your archive. Once this, uh, once this archive is unpacked, it start running multiple agents. For example, in Phosology, we have Nomos and Monk for your license scanning, and we have copyright for your copyright scanning, ECC for ECC scanning. So here uh, you can see typically an example of an uh, unarchive file where you have a license text as as in, in, in the file header. The Phosology is a, a Phosology will find you what license text is that. So it finds the license text, reference to licenses, and written text that explain the licensing and license relevant statement. So it can give you what kind of license is that. It's, it may be difficult from reading the license, what the license, what license is. Also, you will be able to find copyright ECC using copyright ECC scanner. You will find the copyright statement uh, that's there in this file. For example, at the beginning of this uh, uh, beginning of this uh, file, you have a copyright copyright SIM NCG 2013 2015 that can be found by Phosology, and it will give you an consolidated view of all the licenses and copyrights that found. So here you can see an example of such consolidated view. We call it a histogram view. Uh, so here we have a very popular uh, software library called Thrift, which is licensed under Apache. But typically when you scan this software with Phosology, you will find multiple other licenses inside Thrift. For example, though Thrifted license under Apache 2, it's it will it will be your interest that you will find GPL version 2, GPL 3 licenses inside this Apache 3 package. This happens actually because we use multiple OSS to build OSS tools. So it's important that we thoroughly scan those OSS tool and Phosology is important there. It's uh, it helps you to uh, check what licenses your software has or what's going actually inside the software and li what license actually going inside your software. So that's where it's important. So here you can see Phosology is a very specialized tool that mainly used by companies 
those who want to check what kind of licenses goes inside your software. But why it should attract students? How they are benefited? OK, so introduction. So there it comes the introduction to Google Summer of Code. So how Google Summer of Code is helping us building a community around Phosology, how we are maintaining this community, how the how students are getting connected with us. This is beside the companies that already are connected with Phosology. So, uh, so we have tried with multiple other programs. Uh, those who help students to get connected with the OSS projects and Google Summer of Code is one such program that fits fits us the best. Uh, and let's see why this Google Summer of Code is so special with us and why this uh, help how the why and how this helped us a lot in our uh, OSS development. So Google Summer of Code is uh, mainly organized by Google. It's uh, under one. It's under the Google umbrella, and it's uh, it's a global program, focused on bringing more student developer into open source software development. So this is a well known program, international program. It's almost there for 16 plus year, this year, 16th year. So it's uh, there since. Uh, 16 year. Google gives stipend to students, so the students are handsome, handsomely stipend for the for coding for the OSS projects and for or the mentoring organizations, which is the open source organization organization. So this year the program is a bit shortened. It's now a 10 weeks program. Earlier it used to be a 12 to 13 weeks program. So uh, but uh, it's between mentor and students, how the students are focused and how mentors are connected with the students. So you can do a lot of things uh, with this uh, 10 weeks time. So probably when God will do you through the journey, then you will see how much uh, we can do in 10 weeks and how the students have contributed for these 10 weeks. So how the program as we, as I said, the students are handsomely stipend to collect the OSS project experience. Uh, they work for the OSS project, not for the organization. Uh, however, organization need to invest effort for mentoring. So mentors need to come on board and they should be dedicated with the students to mentor them whenever they require to answer their queries and all other stuff they may need during the project. So one thing you should be aware of that this project is funded by Google. So if the students are not interested and students can um, just join the project and then don't do anything, so it's uh, it's not expectation from the students. So students need to be focused on what they want to do for the project. They should be focused on and also the mentors. They should be very much uh, involved in the project, guiding the students and uh, answering students queries. So. So that mentor and student, they work together in the whole project. So it's very important. So every uh, every person participating in this project, they should be focused. And organization, organ, the org admin should take care of this. Uh, that nothing is slip. So everyone is um, at doing the best they can do for the project. So why this GSOC project? So, so what are the achievements that students and the mentors get from here? Um, the students uh, they mainly get uh, experience for writing code. Uh, as we know, the open source code uh, pretty much follow a good standard because its code is visible to all. So, and uh, the student get an experience to work on the OSS project and to get connected with the community. They also uh, come to know about this distributed working environment. They get an inter internship experience. Um, 
this due to this coding exercise they get uh, positive visibility positive visibility in the sense uh, they get uh, this visibility in the community as well as to anyone they want to share so uh, um, means after student they uh, most of the students go for some kind of placement so there also they can showcase that what they did for the oasis and it's um, approved by multiple mentors so obvi uh, obvious reason that the code quality will be um, properly followed and it will be quite good so, uh, so so mentor and the org admin get new contacts uh, contact uh, in the sense the students that are working with the project uh, they will they will continue with the project that's the expectation or if uh, uh, if if you are good to the student, they probably will continue. They, they become a very good contributor for your student. Or they may come back next year as a mentor again. So what's there for the mentors? Mentors are great. Uh, they are contributing to OSS. It's uh, mentors are from the OSS ecosystem, and now they get new persons to know how this ecosystem works. How the person can come and uh, get the knowledge of the OSS project and can work with that uh, work with that person so that they can contribute uh, very good coding uh, very uh, they can contribute a very good it can be code or it can be a feature um, or they can contribute something for the OSS project they can also extend this uh, extend the community to, of your project because uh, the multiple mentors can uh, means for example if you are working on a new project area probably on a new topic then probably your mentor can get some other person who knows that uh, topic pretty well so they can other people other mentor can get connected with your project and the best part I think that mentor gets is attending uh, GSOC Mentor Summit. So every organization can send two people for the GSOC Mentor Summit and there they can attend various um, talks from the other OSS or other uh, as well as other OSS open source organizations. So that's a pretty good part of this program for mentors. So what's the timeline? So as as mentioned before, this is a 10 week program now. So the 10 week program is only for the coding tier. So it starts pretty early and then it starts with the organizations making in applications for the Google Summer of Code. So one, once the organization is selected, the student applications to the organizations um, and GSOC, um, then once the students are selected, they start the coding period and the finally the evolutions uh, student get to evaluate the mentor and both uh, mentors get to evaluate the student and finally they submitted to Google. So let's look a detail of this timeline a bit detail a bit in detail so that we come to know what's happening here. So for, this is the timeline for this year. Uh, the GSOC started GSOC started with the organ when the applications open for the organizations organizations can apply the mentor organization can apply for gsoc this was all started on 29 january this year and uh, the deadline was till 19 february when the gsoc application end then the organizations were announced this is the selected organization that google has now announced uh, i I think this year around 700 organization participated and around 200 organizations got 200 plus organizations got selected for the GSOC program. Now once the organizations get uh, once the organizations get announced, the students have a chance to go through the organizations and find out what kind of project the organizations is interested in. So now the organization interest and student interest both get involved. So students go through the organizations, find out the project, and if the project suits their interest, they can apply for those projects. Now, once the students find the suitable project, they can they can, they start digging into those projects. So to reach out to student, what we do here, we we do a reach out program, and where if uh, 
we started each out uh, program or uh, not program, but a weekly call where students can come on board or they can discuss if they have they have any query about the project. Now, uh, then the student uh, file their applications for the suitable project they have chosen with the organizations and then the organizations get a chance to review those projects application. Once the project applications get reviewed, the students um, then uh, then the organizations uh, submit to the uh, then the organization submit the selected student submit the selected student to Google and Google announce who are the students um, participating for that organization. Then it starts the most interesting part that is the coding part. And now here the maintenance students are completely involved with the project. So students start. Uh, to know about the OSS project, they start digging more into it, and uh, here the mentor should come and help them out. So as a mentor, we help them out whenever they require, they have any queries or anywhere they are blocked in the project. So typically after a month, we get the first evaluation. So students get to do the first, sorry, mentor gets to do the first evaluation of the work. Then uh, the second phase, uh, the after the evolutions, Hopefully all the student get passed and then they start the second phase of this coding work and then uh, finally they submit the evolution uh, uh, means it's a next month. It's a two months program now, so uh, uh, the students submit their. Finally, students submit their code and everything for the final pro evolutions and the, uh, then again evaluated by the mentors and the result is announced finally. So this year we have around seven students and all got successfully completed the GSOC project. So this is more about our GSOC journey this year. We have received 15 proposals. We had 10 mentors. The mentors are from different organizations like um, uh, HP Orange. So we got seven slot allocated by Google. We are thankful for that. And so we are able to complete this whole project in time as I mentioned earlier and all our students completed the final evolution successfully. So this is a journey for the our GSOC. We started this in 2018 where actually we tried to as I, as I mentioned earlier, Vosology is a very special project and uh, getting to the students is uh, getting an interested group to create interested developer group is pretty challenging here. So GSOC was one such program that gave us this opportunity where we created the interested group. Uh, in 2018, we started this uh, journey. Uh, we received three proposal, proposals, two students were selected, and in consecutive years, the number of uh, slots that we have received is in, has increased along with the proposals. So one good thing we are able to do here, we are able to retain our mentors or the students, those who have participated earlier, uh, earlier years. They came back as a mentor. That's that's one uh, good thing for us, and they they successfully mentor the next year student batch, and also. Sometimes one more interesting point probably I would like to share. They not only mentored, sometimes they also like to run some POC to see how they can do more to the project. So that's how our community getting increased. So here is an um, this time, uh, this time for end uh, Google Summer of Code final call. All the students and mentor decided that uh, they want to see each other. So we switched to a video call. So and that's a snapshot from that video call. I think it's pretty good and yeah, we are thankful to our all students and mentors and yeah, definitely the org admin who um, control the whole thing. So this is from my side and next my uh, colleague Gaurav is going to take you to the GSOC journey. Um, how this helped us more about it and over to Gaurav now. Thank you. Thanks Anupam. So let me take you guys through our achievements. Uh, by achievements, I mean the amazing projects uh, which are done by the amazing students uh, 
throughout this GSOC since 2018 with our organization. Um, yeah, so let's have a look. So in the first year uh, in 2018, when we uh, were new to this uh, Google Summer of Code, uh, we got three applications, and from there we you know sorted out to two uh, students. Uh, but due to some reason, one of the students failed uh, to update the uh, progress from his end. So we decided to drop him off, uh, like uh, uh, mark him as fail on the Google dashboard. And we ended up with one uh, amazing student, Aman Jain. Uh, so uh, as you already know, uh, Fosology uh, is a decade old uh, project. Uh, so we thought like we can have a new license scanner, which can take you uh, take help of multiple new uh, text, text statistics uh, algorithms and use them to the benefit of finding out the licenses rather than relying on the rule based uh, uh, scanners what we already have in Fossil. So he did the initial contribution for the Atarachi agent. Uh, which gave us a very nice and a strong base for uh, coming uh, projects. So this same project is still uh, active and still continuing. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it uh, later. Uh, but yeah, so he did a great work over there uh, uh, and he also decided to be a mentor with us for the next year. Uh, since he was already in the final year in 2018, so he could not participate uh, as a student in 2019. But yeah, he decided to be a mentor with us and uh, guide our next student who was going to work on the same uh, Atarashi So in 2019, we received five proposals, uh, five very good proposals. Uh, but unfortunately, we had to reduce it down to three. Um, and we ended up with uh, Vivek, Sandeep, and uh, Ayush working with us. So uh, that year we got two new integrations to Fossil So that is like the big picture uh, you imagine as an open source organization is collaborating with other open source organizations. So these two projects handle them very nicely. Um, so first uh, was the project integration with uh, Microsoft clearly defined and uh, is called as is first in fossil G, uh, done by Vivek. So uh, clearly defined is another portal uh, to store this license clearing information centrally and share it with uh, other members in the community. So this uh, brings us a very good value to our project as well for Solji, like anyone who is uh, using it to do their own license clearing, uh, as well uh, provided a good base uh, where someone can, uh, you know, uh, do their contribution to clearly defined as well. So if I saw a new package today, I did the clearing and then I can contribute it back there so others can benefit from it. Yeah, so that. Uh, you know, the bigger aim of uh, having the open source. Uh, then coming to next project uh, from Sandeep is uh, integration with the uh, software heritage, uh, which is a global archive of all the available source code. So uh, they support like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, any popular repository where, uh, you know, people can host their public code. So this again helped uh, give Fossology another advantage uh, to identify whether a source file is public uh, or is it modified or is it private. Um, you know, it, it helps uh, identify that. So even though uh, this integration does not directly affect how the license clearing is done, but it provides additional information on top of it. So uh, yeah, there are various aspects of uh, any, uh, you know, any software. So uh, that uh, that thing came out uh, clearly over here uh, with this integration of software heritage. Uh, yeah, then we had Ayush continuing uh, the work on Atarashi agent. Uh, 
uh, and bringing them in some new uh, algorithms. So yeah, he was uh, mentored by Aman um, in 2019. Uh, that again brought many new things to Atarashi. Uh, this was the first time we attempted integrating it back to Fossology because uh, it's a stand. It can also work as a standalone uh, tool. So uh, yeah. So in 2019, we decided to you know do an integration uh, and the. Uh, Atarashi already had some uh, algorithms uh, integrated in it, but we did not have any way to do an evaluation. So he also added the test cases uh, for the same. Yeah. So that again is an enhancement for the project. Uh, it also helps us to uh, introduce the CI to it. Uh, we can now do automated build and automated testing in the project. Yeah. Uh, then moving on to next year in 2020, uh, Ayush uh, decided to participate again uh, with us, like for the second term, um, since he was in the final year, and we had Kaushalendra uh, participating for the first time, and also Darshan. So in 2020, also we received five uh, proposals, and we finalized it to three. Uh, so this year, Ayush and Koshlendra decided to collaborate on two projects. Um, so one was the code comment extraction uh, script. We call it MIRDF. Uh, and also uh, some enhancement on the Atarashi side. So this MIRDF we uh, you know, designed so that additional information from the source code can be reduced and the task of identifying the licenses can be improved. So yeah, there was a very good collaboration between these two uh, in 2020 to bring Nirjas uh, to uh, state what it is uh, as of now, and also integrate it with Atarashi and even further uh, enhance the accuracy over there. So yeah, uh, then Darshan, uh, he worked on uh, Grafana based dashboard for Fossology. So, uh, uh, this helped you know, to have additional monitoring uh, rather than just doing a license clearing. You can now also uh, collect various statistics like how is the inflow of the packages for your company, how much hours uh, maybe someone is putting in, or how much of the resource consumption is there. So. Uh, also for IT, um, you know, this is helpful. So, yes, uh, that was again a great contribution from Darshan. And uh, he was also in the final year in 2020. And uh, once he finished uh, the GSOC, he also got an offer from Apple. And yeah, he finally joined uh, the company. Uh, that's one good uh, story. Uh, we, uh, you know, we faced or we rather saw from our own uh, in this talk. And then coming to this year, uh, in 2021, we received uh, the highest number of proposals so far, uh, that was 18. And uh, we managed to get seven of them uh, on board with us. So this year, Koshlendra continued uh, with us. And uh, from previous years, Vivek and uh, Aman, also Ayush, uh, they decided to, uh, you know, be a mentor uh, with our organization. Uh, one good thing also happened. So last year, uh, we could not select one of the uh, proposal uh, due to limited number of slots. So the student, um, you know, was so grateful to us, uh, or rather we are grateful to him, uh, that he decided to mentor us. Uh, in 2021. So, yeah, uh, uh, so these things, you know, happen like uh, you cannot uh, get everything what you want. But yeah, we uh, managed to get him again in 2021 and uh, he mentored uh, along with us for the GSOC. So, yeah, coming to the students, we, uh, seven of them. Um, so, first we had Aman and Shruti. Uh, which worked on creating a new UI for Fossology, which is based on in technology React.js. 
and that was you know just an amazing uh, collaboration between two students uh, which have not even seen them uh, seen each other uh, face to face so also this was uh, during the pandemic so they cannot physically meet at all uh, all the interactions whatever happened were virtual so we are just uh, amazing in the collaboration there uh, they uh, also created a new project in our pathology so is in future the uh, react js is a new trending uh, you know new trending framework uh, we see uh, many students also approaching us uh, already uh, who want to uh, you know do a contribution to the react project and uh, uh, help you uh, pathology getting a better ui for the and yeah koshlendra this year helped us to develop a new agent uh, or a new integration for copyright false positive detection so as an concept pathology also uh, do the copyright scanning uh, not just the license scanning so uh, sometimes we end up having more number of copyrights which are uh, not particularly valid so that is a manual effort to uh, clear all of them do the clearing so yeah, uh, he uh, this year developed new algorithms to uh, reduce that additional effort and also do some clearing on the copyright like ring and jump character and uh, other stuff like that. And also we had Avinal uh, with the new uh, build system we make. Uh, so Osology was relying on make file for like. Uh, 10, 12 years, but yeah, we saw that make file was a bit clunky. Uh, whenever there is a new agent, we have to modify multiple files at a time. And uh, the way the make file were designed initially, uh, we lack uh, you know multi processing, so we cannot compile multiple uh, targets at the same time. So yeah, he helped us to bring make to the mix and. Uh, also uh, uh, increase this uh, build performance uh, like by reducing the build time uh, doing this uh, parallel builds and maybe in future who knows uh, we can also run pathology on new uh, operating system yeah. uh, then we had omar uh, sarita and shreya um, so omar uh, omar's task was very much difficult so also he is not from the computer science background. Uh, he is into uh, electronics. So, uh, but yeah, the contribution he did uh, speaks for itself. So he tried to migrate existing pathology, uh, which is a more of a uh, you know monolithic kind of architecture, into Kubernetes. So yeah, that was a great learning for him as well as uh, also for our mentors because. Uh, only few of them are very familiar with the Kubernetes. So yeah, along with uh, Omar, we also learned many things about the Kubernetes and other stuff. Uh, for example, how containers interact with each other, how their volumes can be mounted here, and, and such stuff. And Sarita uh, again got a new integration. So again, a new community uh, got connected with Pathology. Uh, which is a scan code toolkit, which again is a, a very prominent license scanner, a very well known license scanner. Yeah, so that integration either uh, even enhance the capabilities of pathology and making it a better tool overall. Yeah, so uh, Sarita and also Avinal, uh, they did a great collaboration, um, even though uh, you know they are in the same school uh, but due to pandemic they have uh, never met each other in person so we yeah, are still in in this virtual world uh, these great collaborations um, we have seen how we have witnessed this particular of 2020 uh, then finally we had Shreya uh, with us so she is also from chemical background actually uh, not from computer science or anything related to computer science. 
but still she uh, delivered a project for machine learning uh, what she did is uh, taking various licenses so um, so speaking broad terms you will find that max 500 license uh, out there which are commonly used and those 500 license will give you 500 license spec so if you want to train or uh, any machine learning or text statistics algorithm it becomes very difficult uh, because 500 is not a very vast data set and for each license you have just one uh, text to compare with so her uh, contribution help us create multiple uh, you know multiple variations of the same license text uh and we ended up getting more than i think 3000 license from those 500 we started with yeah uh, so this again will serve as a base uh, for cosology uh, as well as our atarashi uh, agent and also anyone in the same space you know this project is open source the data generated is open source so anyone can come and use the data and generate a new algorithm a new can even better scan yeah so uh, such such amazing things come out when you collaborate uh, with different people and uh, gsoc has helped us to provide that for, uh, platform uh, to be required so uh, uh, ending this thing with the reporting uh, so i have provided uh, some links here uh, we can add the same to uh, the description of the talk so you can go through uh, have a look and feel how the reporting is done um, so all these fields are particularly not mandatory but yeah we recommend all our students to have them uh, which includes the project goal uh, like what was the aim of the particular project we were they are doing um, and various steps uh, to decide you know uh, this approach is good or that approach is good Uh, then we have weekly progress report so it also includes uh, all the weekly calls we have so we uh, for, for all our students we open the call channel so whenever uh, it is required uh, you can or they can contact us or even we have uh, weekly once call with them so yeah they also reported uh, whatever happened in the meeting so if, if uh, anyone uh, you know want to go and have a look they just need to know uh, which particular meeting was it and uh, they have, they will be presented with a complete report and then um, in in this of we have two uh, evaluation times uh, this year so also uh, milestone whatever milestone they have achieved uh, for that particular evaluation uh, whether it is aligned to their progress uh, what they propose or not Yeah, so such uh, reporting is there. So everything is not just uh, you know in code. Uh, it's also well documented. Um, so yeah, you can uh, have a look on these links and maybe uh, use them as a guide as well for maybe uh, your students, uh, which will be contributing uh, to your particular project. Uh, so for our community. Uh, we gathered some of the statistics so uh, since we started uh, participating in this of this competition how it uh, has affected our community so with all the stats we got six new particular uh, six new projects in the community four new integration uh, that you know is simply a multiple uh, the super four uh, then we uh, student combined have given their 3000 plus hours uh, doing all this activity and generated more than 150000 lines of code which is a huge thing to achieve yeah and we really appreciate all the effort uh, students have put in there and uh, overall we got like more than 180 pull requests uh, just concerning the kind of code in our community Uh, we have 30 new features, uh, so all these things are not just restricted to uh, the code what they have done uh, during the summer period. So they also 
you know uh, collaborated with us before this of and sometimes even after this of uh, there were few uh, open issues they also fixed that so we got 40 issues uh, fixed as well and overall we uh, had been uh, you know contacted to 35 new contributors that that is a big number for any uh, open source community yeah uh, especially in cosology this is a big achievement for us uh then i'll end with uh, other programs apart from google summer of code which are there uh and i would encourage everyone you know to uh, either if you are a community uh, maintainer or if you know your maintainer if you know your admin please 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 do reach out to them as them to participate in any of the program uh, i listed here i will give you a brief uh, about all of them so for example outreachy is similar to google summer of code is a paid internship for three months uh, then we have uh, google season of docs that again is from google but it concentrates more on the documentation uh, aspect of the project so yeah that uh, i believe would be very interesting for uh, all of the thank you Uh, and it is for six months, so it is based on um, you know there will be stipend, but it's more based on the grant uh, rather than directly paying to students. Then we have Anita Bor uh, organization which promote uh, women in tech. Yeah, so again uh, the part spent like the students uh, need to be from uh, like need to be a female. but the mentoring mentoring organization can be uh, anything uh, then again from the linux community we have various mentorship programs going on so there is mentorship in uh, cncf there is mentorship in kernel yeah so if you are part of linux foundation uh, like cosology uh, you can also uh, participate there and we recently have a new project in india called Uh, the script summer of code it was started in 2018 is also 3 months long like the uh, summer of code and is uh, i believe also a paid uh, internship for for the students yeah so i highly recommend uh, you if you uh, like i i highly recommend you to go out and uh, see uh, what program suits your organization best and please uh, Uh, improve your collaboration so if you have any questions please do reach out to us uh, drop us a mail anytime or even go to our community uh, in in our wiki we also have a slack channel uh, you can join that uh, there are there is also a youtube channel we have uh, where we uploaded some training videos and also Uh, some technical videos also in the gsoc we have some preparation courses and they are also so yeah uh, thanks for listening and uh, have a nice day